Hello and welcome back to Prompt Circle where we discuss AI automation solutions. We provide tutorials and dive deep into use cases that are practical for business automation, uh, helping to improve productivity, increasing efficiency of your businesses today. In today's video, I want to take some time to look at the Google Palm AI model uh, from Google, which is basically uh, their response to uh, the GPT models from OpenAI. Um, BARDA has been out for a while and you know we all know that it's sort of the chat GPT rival. So we're going to be looking at the model that powers BARD specifically. Uh, it's called the Palm AI model and its performance is quite interesting and you as you all know i mean for the for the most part uh, in past videos i've been using open ai gpt 3.5 gpt 4. in this video we're going to take a look at how you can set up um, bard typically we like to build on slack on this channel so we're going to be building a slack bard bot uh, using the pam ai uh, api directly all right, so let's go ahead and enable Vertex AI API. So this is the API that is gonna give us access uh, to Palm. So all we need to do is just hit the enable button here, and this will go ahead and enable the API. So let's give it a few minutes here so we can see now. And here you get to see all uh, the various capabilities of Vertex. And now it's it also has access to a bunch of other API um, APIs. Sorry that you can also enable. I went ahead and just enabled all the recommended APIs uh, because it does have quite a few things that are pretty impressive. So let's just step through some of the things that you get with your Vertex AI uh, dashboard and see uh, some of the cool uh, capabilities that we do have here. You can see the API list here. Uh, so Vertex AI, which we already um, you know, enabled, and then there are a few other ones which you can also enable uh, if you want, including like a vision model, uh, access, uh, things of that nature, things to manage your data and all of that stuff. But for now, we're just going to really focus on the model garden. So what is the model garden? The model garden essentially provides you access to all the uh, available models uh, that you can actually use. And that is where you get to see the, the models, just very, very similar to OpenAI's GPT. These are the models that you can use. And you can see that the, they also can kind of classify them based on modalities. So if I zoom in here a little bit, you can see uh, the, language, the language models are over here. There are visual, vis, vision models, there are speech models, and so on and so forth. They also provide you with information about the tasks as well. Now, as you can see with, um, the Palm Foundation models, you see three of them that are really critical here. You have the text model, which is really great for classification, extraction, summarization, and doing sentiment analysis. You have the Palm 2 chat, which is basically a chat based model. So when you're doing uh, building chatbots, building anything that is conversational, uh, you want to use the Palm 2 chatbot. And then finally, you have embeddings. We've talked about embeddings a lot on this channel. Embeddings is converting text into numerical representations, which makes it easier to process uh, information um, searches, uh, do similarity search, um, do semantic search really, really quickly. So you have those embeddings here as well. So this is pretty awesome, but I think the cool thing about Google is that they're aggregating all these different models. And when you think about the depth of the models that they have and, and the potential to kind of uh, combine these models and you see that there is a ton of awesome things here. Now, in addition to the uh, language, the foundational language models, there are a few other models that you can see here. There is the chirp, which is basically for speech. They have some vision models here, and then they also have some code completion models that are specifically code completion as well. Now, to actually um, take a look at how the models work specifically you can go ahead and just simply click on view details of the model and you can open the prompt design page um, which will take you basically to something that is very similar to the playground uh, in 
open ai which gives you the ability to basically play around with this now this is one thing i love about google and their design and the way they've put this together is that they have really taken some time uh, to think about kind of defining how you should think about prompts and i think this is something that is really really critical um, i talk about it a lot in my course in uh, anytime i'm talking about large language models as well uh, by the way if you are interested in understanding more about large language models i do have a very extensive course that goes into very very intricate details about every single concept you need to know about large language models including prompt engineering um, as well as other key uh, um, ways of building these large language model applications i've also spent a ton of time uh, working on practical use cases which you can use so build a lot of slack chatbots deploy them to production it's quite valuable i also have a really really thriving uh, slack community where you can get 247 support including where you can interact with some of the bots that we built during the course so if you're interested in learning more about how to build large language model applications on slack uh, you know check out the uh, description below for a link to the course check it out and see if it's something that might be useful in your journey all right but heading back to this let's talk about how uh, you know sort of Google has structured this now context simply means this is where I am setting the context of my code uh, of my of my AI model this is where I'm gonna define the instructions that that kind of make it uh, that tailors it to do specific things. So here, for instance, I can go and say, you are an assistant uh, that would be helping me to write really great marketing copy. And that could be basically the, you know, the context you're giving it. Um, and then um, when you kind of look at this, you can see you can provide examples and this is really critical and this is what I love about the way Google has structured this is that they're trying to really help you around um, context setting, uh, explain to you how to provide examples to the model because these are the things that make your model behave better. So for instance, you could basically say um, generate a social a twitter post about uh promoting my hair product brand let's use that as an, as an example and we say check out my hair check out my awesome hair brand and you can just use this basically to you know add you know maybe some copy examples that you'd want to give uh you know the the model uh, I, I almost said chat gpt there whatever you want to give um the ai model uh to uh, the vertex ai model or the palm ai model i should say the Palm AI model uh, to be able to perform the task. Now you can add something more creative, but I'm just using this more as, a, as an illustration of how you could use context and examples. And then uh, you can set things like temperature. Uh, as we all know, temperature is for sort of the randomness. So if you want to reduce hallucination, you can get it all the way to zero. Um, but if you're looking for something that is maybe a tad little bit creative, you can do that. Now, one thing I would say in terms of when you sort of compare um, the models, uh, the OpenAI model with uh, the Palm model is that the the token uh, limit is much lower. So I think the highest they have is 1,204 for your output tokens. So that's for the output. I think the input is somewhere around 1,000 plus as well. So it's uh, or 3,000, something of that nature. So it's about 4,000-ish uh, that you're getting for, the, for their best performing uh, model, which is the chat bison model. Right, so the chat bison model is their best performing model and it doesn't have um, a very, very strong 
uh, token limit when compared to uh, you know GPT 3.5 which has 16,000 tokens um, and uh, GPT 4 obviously which has up to 32,000 tokens so it doesn't compare in that regard but I think in other ways I think it compares very well so all right so now to get started with building our application out the very first thing we need to do is that we need to create the api credentials which we're going to be using to access this model from our slack application so to do that here are a few things that we need to do um so first thing we need to go to apis and services and go to enabled apis and services i'm just going to continue without saving here and we're going to go to Vertex um, AI API. So if you have enabled your API, it's going to be there. It's going to be uh, there. It's going to be Vertex AI API. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And once I open this up, it gives me the option to create a credential. So to use this API from an external system, you need to create credentials. So you go ahead and create credentials. It will ask you what type of credentials uh, you're trying to create. So in this case, we're, we're creating it for our Vertex AI API and it's asking what type of data are we going to be passing in? Uh, we're not using a lot of data. We're going to just be basically using um, application data, but we're not going to be using any of this. So you can use no, and then you can hit the next button. Now it's going to take us to a service account. This is the best way to create um, a credential. So we can go ahead and create our credential. We're going to call it prompt circle learn slack what okay so there we go we have our service name um, that should be fine and we can go ahead and continue i'm just going to hit done and now we have we now have um, a set of service accounts now under the service accounts so if you go to credential you'll see that you now have a service account now, under service account, what you want to do is to go ahead and actually create API keys. So right here, we can just basically go to keys and under key, we can just simply say um, add key and create a new key. Now, it's recommended that you use the JSON key type. So this is going to basically download your, your credentials into a file so you can see that my download is right here and now once it's downloaded you should store that file in the root directory of the application you're building so that you can access it um, accordingly all right so we have our everything we need uh, from google cloud to get started now let's go ahead and also do something similar for Slack. Uh, to build out our Slack application, we need to do um, a few things. So let's go ahead and do that right here. So first and foremost, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new app. We're gonna use an app manifest. It makes it much, much easier to work with. We're gonna select the workspace where we want to build our app. Now I'm just gonna be using a manifest uh, that I already created. So this basically has uh, information, a hello world, um, and, and then the config, type of configuration that I need uh, for a Slack app. So let's go ahead and call this our Slack Bard AI application. And we're going to call it Slack Bard app. So let's call it that. And every other thing should be fine. We've added a chat write, app mentions, read, and IM history uh, to the scope. And we've also added uh, some bot events, basically events that allow us to respond, uh, uh, that allows us to handle any inbound messaging that comes to the bot when it is mentioned or when a direct message is directed at it. And then we've also enabled socket mode. So socket mode is just going to allow us to run this seamlessly in our local environment. Okay, so then we want to go ahead and create this. So everything looks good. We can go ahead and create our app. Now, once we create our app, we, we still need to do a few more things. So first and foremost, we need to um, install the app to our workspace. So we want to allow that. And next up, we want to go into um, our app token and generate an app token. So let's go ahead and get an app token. We're just going to call this app token. 
and we want to add the connection to write scope to our app token i want to click on generate right so we're going to need this uh, token so basically the, uh, the our app token is the first thing we need we'll also need um, our bot token so we, we can go ahead and take our bot token so we can go to OAuth permissions and let's copy this bot token because we're going to need it so copy it and keep it somewhere safe and then once we're done our app is ready to go let's go ahead and set up the development environment okay so i'm just going to go into my terminal here and i am going to make a directory so i'm going to cd into code repo uh, repo and i'm going to cd let's do an ls cd into prompt circle yt and make directory let's close all right so let's go ahead and create a directory for our code so i'm just going to go ahead and make a new directory called bard let's call it slack bard ai bot and we're going to just cd into that directory cd into this directory called bard bot all right and then we're going to be opening up our visual studio code right here and right in there we're going to um, immediately access our command line so it's going to make it here and now the next thing we want to do is we're going to do a few things here so one i want to install virtual env so we want to do a pip install virtual env so we can create our virtual environment and then we're going to go ahead and create a virtual environment called so virtual env called slack bot and now we have a virtual environment and now we can go ahead and activate this environment so we'll say source slack bot slash bin slash activate and this gets to activate our uh, virtual environment so now we can go ahead and actually install Google Cloud AI platform. So pip install Google dash cloud dash AI platform. So that's the first thing we need to install. All right. Once we're done installing that, then we need a few other things to install as well. So first off, we're going to need to install uh, Vertex AI. Uh, we will also need to install, um, we'll also need to install Slack Bolt. So let's clear this. So pip install, so we're going to install a few things here. So pip install uh, Slack underscore Bolt. We're going to also install um, the vertex AI so vertex 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 AI and we're gonna also install Python dot env because I'm gonna be creating um, let's say no Python dot env sorry so I'm gonna install those and while I am installing all of that so it seems like everything installed correctly all right so while I'm installing that the next thing I need to do is pull in the file where I um, I had stored my uh, Google credentials. All right, so let's step through the code and see exactly how it works. So right here, we can see that we are importing our Vertex AI after we had installed it. We're also importing the chat model um, from the Vertex AI dot preview language models. 
um, and we're also initiating our Vertex AI. So to initiate your Vertex AI, you're passing your project ID. So you need to obtain your project ID from your Google Cloud Console and then your location. And then we are now initializing the model we're using. So we're using the chat model here, which is chat bison 001, which we saw earlier on. And then we're passing the parameters of this particular model. So in this case, we're setting temperature and max output tokens. Temperature we're setting to 0 0.2 and the max output tokens we're setting to 1024. Now, we're now gonna start our chat model by just um, in uh, setting the chat model to dot start chart and then to obtain a response from our chat uh, we're going to use the send message method so we do chat the send message we pass the message we're trying to send and then we also pass in the parameters that we had uh, defined earlier on and that's all we need uh, to actually obtain um, a response from our message so let's go ahead and run this and you can see right here, it does respond. The response from the model says, hello there, how can I help you today? So this is exactly how our application is going to work. So let's go ahead and actually put this now into Slack. All right, so let's step through our bot, our chatbot um, code here. So we have the import OS, uh, which allows us to access our .env file. We have Vertex AI, uh, which we saw earlier on in the app before. We do have .env um, to enable us access our environment variables. We do also have our chat model, which we're bringing in from Vertex AI. And then we've also imported the Slack Bolt um, app, uh, for, for app and also the socket mode handler because we're gonna be using this in socket mode. So, I mean, we've gone through the function already, but all we're really doing is initializing Slack, getting it ready to go. And then we're defining our function um, you know, a little bit more elegantly. So we're passing in a message text uh, rather than hard coding the text uh, as we were doing before. We're, we're passing in the message text and we're returning a response. So inside our Slack event handler, so let's call this message um, handler. So in our, in our message handler, we're passing in message and say. So we obtain the message text from our message and then to get the AI response, we're calling this function where we have uh, used the chat bison model. We're calling that function and passing in the message text. And then the say response is basically um, going to, you know, respond with whatever message is in AI response. AI response is what's coming back from Google Palm. And as usual, we're just gonna say that response out. So to run this particular application, let's just save this and then go ahead and run our application. So we'll say python bot.py. And now we should have our Bolt app is running, so ready to go. So now let's go check this out inside Slack. So now we can actually start chatting with Bart. So hello there. And let's see if he gets us a response. Okay, gets us a response. Hello there, how can I help you today? Um, thank you. Uh, I could say something like, please, can you write a poem about the awesomeness of large language models? Now, the cool thing about uh, Palm API um, AI is that it has a um, a more recent cutoff time in terms of the training, which means that you can actually um, ask it about more recent things. So, for instance, I could say, "Tell me about the Langchain library," and let's see if it if it knows what the Langchain library is. So, it's a Python library for building large and training large language models. So, it has that information. If you ask. Uh, chat GPT about Langchain, it doesn't typically know because it, the cutoff date is in 2021. The cutoff date for this, I think, is around March or February 2023, which means this is far more recent and more um, up to date. But that is not the coolest thing about Palm API, uh, the Palm AI. The coolest thing about Palm AI 
is the fact that it does come with memory already implemented, which means I can ask it without implementing any type of memory handling. I can say, what was the first, let's say, uh, the first sentence in the poem, the, or the first verse of the poem you generated earlier on. So let's ask it. Let's see. All right. So all large language models, let's see. All large language models, how vast and mighty you are. You can process information in a way that no human can. And that is exactly what you pull back. This is completely transformational when you're building an application. So I encourage you uh, to go try it out. Uh, check it out, see what it's like. I'm going to be delving more into Palm AI and more capabilities of it. I hope you found this video useful. To follow along, you can just simply use the GitHub repository. I'm going to put that in the description. I'm also going to put links to how you can access Google Console and other capabilities as well. Until next time, do have a great one. Cheers.